Wow, where has the time gone? Let's see, uh, family visits, an anime convention, ambulance ride to the hospital with an overnight stay because my blood pressure dropped too low. Good times. So, where were we? In stops and explanations. Here we go. What, trying to, where did I leave off? Um, okay, so, an end stop. Just, this will just be a quick review. I'm not going to repeat everything, but I've got um, my plus and my minus and my S. Plus is 5 volts. Uh, I've got ground and my signal that goes back to my controller. So in order for us to know if our end stop has been triggered at this signal pin, we need to change states, either from 5 volts down to 0 volts or from 0 volts back up to a high of 5 volts. One of those two things needs to happen. And the easy way to do that is to simply short my signal pin to my ground using a switch like this one that I used before. So it's either closed or here it is open. And you also, we determined, need to have a pull-up resistor uh, in this configuration to pull the pin up to 5 volts so that you know, if I measure right here, uh, it's 5 volts until we close the switch, connect it to ground, and then my signal drops to 0 volts like that. So we have to have a pull-up resistor in place if we're going to use just a simple switch like that. So that's a quick recap. What kind of switch can we use here? And the answer is just about anything that will, will completely open or close electrically. This switch here, if I draw this out, has three pins, a common, normally closed, and normally open. So when it's normal state, just sitting there doing nothing, the common pin is connected to the normally closed. As soon as I close that switch, the contact switches over to the normally open side. When I release the switch, the contact moves back over to the normally closed. So I could use either of these, normally closed or normally open, to connect to my end stop as long as I have my firmware set correctly so that it's looking for the right state change either high or low, and that will work just fine. I've got another kind of switch right here. This is a push-button switch. It has nothing special or fancy. It's just, uh, just a switch. If I hook a meter up to it to determine how it works, put my meter on resistance, and I'll connect my meter leads to the switch leads. And right now, uh, it's normally open. When I push on the plunger, it, it closes. There are resistance, zero ohms, it's closed. I release the switch, it's open, closed. You get the idea. I wouldn't normally use a switch like this because there's a lot of resistance on the plunger, but I just want to indicate what switches do, which is open or close. Now I've got this kind of switch as well. I pulled this out of a DVD player. It's normally closed in its idle position unless you push it one way or the other and then the contacts open. So if I connect my meter to these pins it shows that it is closed until I push on the lever and then it becomes open. This is normally closed, open, closed. It's a good switch to be used as an end stop. And I can prove that that will work as an end stop by connecting this switch to the X minimum end stop connector of the ramps board. This is the ground and the signal pin. And then let's go and look at uh, Pronter face. Oh, yeah, I made some changes here, so I have to explain that. I uh, basically, i using Pronter face to look at my end stops. And right now, if you look at it, it's flickering a little bit up in the top left corner because I made a, a G-code file. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. I made a G-code file using Notepad++, and all I did was use two commands, M119, which requests the end stop status, and then I used a G4, which is dwell. 
This just means to wait a certain amount of time you define. So G4, and then I used an S to indicate uh, seconds that I want to wait. So uh, I've got uh, G4, S1, meaning wait one second, and then M119, giving my end stop status, and then just repeated that about 10,000 times. So it will run for a long time. I was just tired of hitting the send button all the time, so this just automatically updates every second what my end stop status is. I'm lazy. Now, I've also only got the xmin and the xmax uh, defined in my Marlin code. Uh, just xmin and xmax. That way it's a little less confusing to figure out what exactly we're trying to look at. I also have my end stop pull-ups. Uh, in place for my xmin and xmax and I've also got my um, xmax in stop my inverting is set to true so it's, it's expecting a normally open switch at that in stop connector and xmin I've got set to default so it's looking for a normally closed switch contact just wanted to make sure that I explained that so everyone was clear about what I was doing so I have my X min, it says it's open in prompter face. Um, as soon as I open my switch, it says that it's triggered. And that's a normally closed switch. When it's in that closed state, the end stop says that it's open. Now, this has very low physical resistance. Uh, it's normally closed. This would make a great end stop switch. It's small, I can mount it anywhere. Um, you know, this is just something I salvaged, but it would make a pretty good end stop switch. Just about any kind of switch can be used to close the two contacts of your end stop connector. If you take, um, uh, I'm going to take this old Dell mouse and rip it apart and look at the inside here. I've got a board inside that has these three micro switches on it. If I pull one of these out and look at it more closely, you can see that it's electrically the same as the bigger switch. I've got a common, normally open, and a normally closed, just like the larger switch did. And there's a little tiny nub that uh, you push on to activate the switch, and you can't really hear it. But when you push on it, my common contact switches over from my normally closed to my normally open contact. That could be used as an end stop as well, if that's what you've got access to. I mean, you could literally take a clothespin and drill a hole through it, put a couple of screws through the end, and attach a couple of leads to it to make yourself a normally closed switch like that. Um, if you were to take your meter oh, and connect this uh, switch that you just made to the meter leads, it says that it's closed until I open it, and there it's closed. I'm not saying I recommend this unless you're really strapped for cash, but I just wanted to demonstrate the concept of an open and closed switch. As long as you've got a device that is completely closes the contacts or and completely opens them, so you only have two different states, open or closed, you can use that as an end stop. At least I have used a multiple of different kinds of switches and they've worked really fine for me. I'm trying to make this point to make sure I'm clear on that because the next video I'm going to talk about electronic sensors and why they're similar to a mechanical switch but different in other ways but uh, this concept is important to understand before I can move on so hopefully the next video makes sense as well so please stick around for that